Good morning. I'm Molly Weiss, Vice President of Member Engagement and Programming at the Nashville Healthcare Council. And welcome to our Meet the Past LHC Board Series. This year, LHC has celebrated 20 years of convening Nashville's emerging leaders. Throughout this year, we have taken the opportunity to hear from past leaders and continue to deliver on our core values of providing educational content, a space for you to collaborate with like-minded healthcare professionals, and develop lasting relationships to carry with you throughout your career. A big thank you to our 20th anniversary sponsors, Belmont University, Jack C. Massey Graduate School of Business, HCA Healthcare, Lipscomb University, Beffer Graduate School of Business, Oracle Cerner, Surgery Partners, and Team Health. Thank you all. We will be taking questions for conversation and discussion via the chat function for today's program. I encourage you to submit and ask your questions early. And now it is an absolute honor to introduce one of our past LHC board members and one of our founders, Cal Duke, Chief Information, Information Officer at Evidence Care. Cal, we're so glad you're with us this morning. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here and uh, looking forward to the conversation. Great. Well, we will just go ahead and jump in and get started. Um, originally, Cal from Somerville, Georgia, you attended Maryville College and then moved to Nashville in February of 1998. Walk us through your career journey and how you navigated entering the healthcare industry. Sure, yeah. Uh, when, when I came to Nashville in 98, um, I didn't know a lot about healthcare or, or didn't envision um, a career in healthcare, really. Um, I came here to work for a, a technology company, a consulting company that did a lot of work for healthcare clients. And so I got introduced to healthcare that way. Um, and after a short time working with them, I actually jumped over to a healthcare company, CHD Meridian Healthcare. Um, and, and spent about four years there, uh, really learning a, a lot about the healthcare industry, worked with some great people, um, met Kimberly Gessley there, and that's when we started working on um, leadership healthcare with Matt Galvin at the council back at that, at that time, um, and just really grew to, to um, enjoy working in healthcare and, and kind of saw you know, just the scope of the healthcare industry here in Nashville and, and all the opportunity. Um, went to, uh, to Lipscomb to get my MBA in um, healthcare management uh, at that point uh, because I had, you know, made the decision that healthcare is where I wanted to be. And then um, after, um, after we finished that, my wife and I did that program together um, she got accepted to the PhD program at Ole Miss. So we actually moved away uh, for about three years for her to do her, her doctorate work. I went through the accounting program at Ole Miss because I was going to be there and thought I'd take advantage of it. And then um, while we were there, I had met David Fredrickson. I think David may be on the, the call today um, on that first leadership healthcare board. And we stayed in touch. Uh, we got to be friends. We stayed in touch the whole time we were away. And then we moved back. Um, he had um, helped start a company called Healthcare Value Analytic. No, I'm sorry, uh, Insight Healthcare Financial. Um, and, uh, you know, they were kind of looking for somebody with a technology and accounting and finance background and, and thought I'd be a good fit. So that was my first um kind of step into an early stage startup company, um, which I, I'll kind of come back to that. I got bit by the startup bug there and didn't really know it yet. But um, that, that got us to about 2008. Um, the economy tanked and, and our startup kind of struggled in that point. Um, I had two, two young kids and needed a little bit more stability. So uh, got an opportunity to go to work at HealthSpring um, and spent six years at HealthSpring, which was uh, a phenomenal six years. I worked for Andy Flat there. Um, Andy was a great leader and mentor, and it's kind of shaped my career um, since then. 
Uh, the company grew from about $900 million when I first got there, it had just gone public to a $10 billion company. So crazy growth for six years, acquisitions. And, and then we got acquired by Cigna the last two years. And so that was a lot of good experience, but prepared me kind of for my next role. So I became the CIO of 10 Care and worked with Darren Gordon and his team there. Really great team, really great experience. Um, learned a ton uh, about healthcare and Medicaid and all kinds of things. Uh, and particularly learned that uh, I didn't love the government side of, of working in that, but, but it was a great experience. And uh, again, then uh, David Fredrickson popped up because he had started uh, Patient Focus and um, they were growing and the company was taking off and looking to figure out how to scale. And so I went over and worked with David again for four years, uh, just helping kind of build the foundation for that company to start to take off and scale from a technology and operation standpoint. Um, really enjoyed working with David, learned a ton. Um, he's been a great friend and mentor. And then from there, had an opportunity to do another startup with Bo Bartholomew. Um, Bo, another connection I had through Leadership Healthcare. Um, and, and we uh, had an idea that a physician in Texas had come up with, but really didn't know how to turn it into a company. So uh, we started working on that and pitched that. And I became a full-time employee of Healthcare Value Analytics in February, I think it was 24th or 26th of 2020. So the timing probably could not have been worse. And um, so, you know, kind of made our way through the COVID year, managed to raise a little bit of money and kind of get the company stood up and at least going forward as best we could for a COVID year. Um, at the end of 2020, picked up a little bit of momentum. And in the, in the middle of that, Bo had had the opportunity to become the CEO of Evidence Care. And um, he had stayed on as board chair of, of healthcare value analytics. And so we, we worked on a partnership and, and some things that the companies could collaborate on. And then after HVA picked up a little bit of momentum, they saw some value and then they acquired us about 18 months ago. And so the last 18 months um, I've been with evidence care. Um, it's kind of been a whirlwind, but it's been a really good experience so far. Fantastic. So I've heard startups, government, being bought, transition, merger, a lot of relationships back and forth in there as well. Um, would you share with us any lessons learned over the course of your career through all of this? Well, I, I touched on it a little bit. I, I've been really blessed that I've worked for a, for and with a lot of great people um, who have helped me, you know, mentored me or, or helped me. Um, David, I mentioned, Andy Flatt, um, Darren Gordon, um, Bo, just a lot of great, um, a lot of great leaders and then a lot of great teams, uh, like the team that, that I'm part of now at um, Evidence Care is a phenomenal team of folks. Um, and, you know, so just a lot of mentors along the way. Um, so, you know, take advantage of those, those opportunities. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be even, you know, kind of the traditional thing that we think about is find someone who's older and more experienced. And, and you know, I've definitely benefited from that, but also uh, a lot of peer mentoring along the way. Um, and, and Nashville's a great town to, to do that. I mean, people are very willing to give of their time to, to help each other. So um, I think just, just being mindful of, of kind of the, the folks that, that I've worked with you know, work with. Um, I did an exercise probably, you know, after I'd worked for a couple of places, um, a friend led me through an exercise where uh, the exercise you list kind of, you create, you know, your made up perfect job and you list about, I think we came up with about 30 aspects of the job and it's everything from, you know, the industry to your title to your compensation to the people you work with, location. We listed all these aspects of what would make the perfect job in your mind. And then you start erasing things five at the time. 
till you get down to kind of those last, I think we left three on the board and it's like, okay, the three things that you didn't erase that kind of rose to the top is what's important for you. And um, surprisingly to me, it didn't have anything to do with salary and compensation and all of that. It really had to do with, um, you know, kind of the, what the company does, the mission of the company and the people that I worked with. And so I've just kind of, the last few places that I've worked, that's been, you know, as I evaluate, is this something that I want to commit to that's top of mind as, is, you know, the folks, the the leadership and the, the folks that you'll be working with day in and day out. That's great advice. And I think something we can all um, take advice from as we continue to grow, to continue to grow in our careers. Um, so you're now CIO of Evidence Care, Cal. The mission of Evidence Care is to optimize clinicians' workflow to deliver better care, improved outcomes, and increase revenue. Will you break that down for us? Sure. Yeah, you know, Evidence Care, we're a technology company. We're a product company. Um, our focus has really been on the physician. And, um, you know, EHRs have now been around for a while. Um, I think a lot of us, when we think about it, would recognize that, you know, originally EHRs were, the, the main purpose was to collect information related to, you know, billing and getting paid and um, not a ton of focus really on physicians and, and most physicians would probably not give their time spent in EHRs high marks for being, you know, a positive um, aspect of their day. So we've really tried to focus on creating products that are really focused on helping the physician, one, their experience in the EHR, uh, help ease that maybe, you know, it may be by uh, helping them create better documentation um, within less time um, or helping make a better decision without having to go look uh, for a bunch of, uh, of data points, pu pulling those together and putting it right in their existing workflow that they're already in. So we've tried to optimize that clinician workflow. And then the outcome of that would be, you know, increased revenue for the facility or reduced cost for the facility and better care delivered just because the, the time spent in the, in the EHR for the physician is, is more streamlined and uh, more effective. Great. And so to go a little bit deeper on that, um, how do you evidence care um, align your business and technology to your clients? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Uh, a couple of couple of thoughts around that. One, especially given this last year, you know, hospitals who are our buyer, um, our our tools are really today focused on um around inpatient care um, in hospitals. And so hospitals are our buyer. Um, hospitals are having, you know, one of the worst financial years that they've ever had. A lot of hospitals are having the worst financial year they've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, if, if you're going to go into that area and, and be effective in sale, um, there's a couple of things that you have to think about aligning. One is, um, at this point where they're financially strapped, what are they willing to invest in? Um, so, you know, aligning the message that we are producing an ROI, we are increasing revenue, we are reducing costs. That's the message, you know, for the health system, who's the ultimate buyer. Um, so making sure that our platform is aligned with that and that's, you know, and we can say that with confidence. And then the second part of that is that only comes to fruition if the folks who actually use the tools will use them. And so that's the physician piece. And so making sure that, you know, we're aligned with physicians and, and making their life easier and understanding um, where they see value and, and creating tools that they will actually use because they see value and it makes their life easier. Um, so I'd say that's kind of the two areas that we've been focused on and, and even more focused on this last year, given the, the environment is, is making sure that the ROI is uh, aligned with, you know, what health systems are focused on and making sure we're creating tools that, that actually will be used to produce that ROI. 
Great. Thank you for sharing that. So right before we jumped on here, we were talking about chief information officer and then chief information officer of an organization of 40 people and what that means. And you said it means a lot of things to a lot of different people. But um, Kyle, what does your day to day look like as chief information officer at Evidence Care? Uh, so a day in my life, um, a lot of focus on um, security and compliance. Um, obviously, that's a big focus for the industry. Um, a lot of hospitals have struggled with ransomware attacks. And, and so if you've got a platform that you're going to connect up to a hospital system, that's going to be one of the first gates you have to get through. Um, so I do spend a lot of time focused on that part of our of our company um, and making sure that we're building products and and um, you know can um, demonstrate that security and compliance is um, not an afterthought but a forethought in what we're doing. Um, a, a lot of time on partnerships. Um, that's been one of the things um, that that I've been leading for our executive team is a focus on. Um, evaluating um, and managing partnerships. Um, also, um, our one product, CareGage, is the product that we had at um, Healthcare by Analytics. So as we've brought that product over and started integrating that into Evidence Care's um, platform and their other tools, um, I kind of had the longest, uh, you know, the most knowledge, I guess you would say, of that product. So I do spend a lot of time um, with that team working on that product, getting it um, integrated and um, and also looking at, you know, kind of the future where that product's going for the company. Very good. Lots of stuff going on over there. Um, so looking forward, what do you see as major changes coming to the healthcare industry and where do you see the opportunities for healthcare growth and innovation? Um, you know, we talked a minute ago about, you know, kind of EHRs and sort of the history there. Um, now that those have been in place for a lot of years, there's been a lot of data collected um, and there's, you know, a constant collection of a lot of data. And I think we've just scratched the surface of starting to figure out how to unlock that data uh, and, and use it to, uh, to move healthcare forward. Um, and, and a lot of the initial kind of focus on that is, um, unlocking insights in that data for management teams, you know, maybe reporting or analytics tools, dashboards, things that give the management team insight, which is, which is all great stuff. Um, you know, we've, we're kind of focusing on unlocking, um, that data for the physician themselves and their decision making. So I think we've just, you know, started to scratch the surface on how we um, start to unlock that and make it usable and, and make it usable in, you know, a relevant time at the point of care. Um, so I, I think over the next 10 to 15 years, you're going to see an acceleration of adoption and innovation um, in healthcare around technology. And that, that, I think there's a ton of opportunity. I'm pretty excited to see where that goes. Great. So to switch gears a little bit um, and talk about career and leadership, and the, I know this resonates with you, as you know, um, as one of our founders that LHC members are top performers in their companies, always looking for ways to grow and move forward in their careers and, and in the healthcare industry. Kyle, when hiring or promoting a leader or deciding to work with a client, what are those professional and personal characteristics you're looking for in a candidate? I'm going to kind of point back to um, the, the evidence care values. Um, we, as part of kind of helping build our culture, we've really focused on a set of values as a company. Um, and I mean, we focus on those weekly, like every week we have a, a company um, town hall meeting, the whole company gets on the call and, you know, we share information and do educational things, but we always start the meeting focused on the values and we do value shout outs and, you know, uh, folks in the company will shout out other team members that they've seen live out certain values. And so um, 
those values or uh, integrity, you know, just having a, a high say do ratio um, yeah. is, is important. Respect, being respectful of, of you know, every, your, your teammates um, and, and, you know, just always assuming good intent in folks um, and kind of how you interact. Grit, having grit, being able to kind of roll up your sleeves, especially in small, scrappy startup companies, takes a lot of grit. Teamwork, you know, being able to effectively work with uh, other people and, you know, find ways to win together uh, and celebrate things as a team. Innovation and not, I mean, it, big innovation is good, but it doesn't have to be big innovation. Sometimes it's just being nimble and adaptive in what you do for the company and as problems come at you, just being innovative on how, you know, I'm going to solve it or this small team of folks are going to solve it. And then our last one, which is critically important, and if you follow us on LinkedIn, you probably see this a lot, is fun. Uh, we definitely have a lot of fun. So we want, you know, folks that are going to embrace that and um, and make, you know, make coming to work every day something that, that you and, and your team, uh, you know, want to do and want to be a part of. I love that. And one of the things that I've noticed over the last, I would say five to six months is almost every one of our meet the past board um, or executive briefing speakers have talked about their core values and the importance of that when looking to hire or work with another client. Um, so it's a theme that we're seeing and hearing a lot of. So thank you for sharing that um, for how you all look at it at, at Evidence Care. So Kyle, reflecting on your career, I'm curious, how have you built confidence and resiliency? Yeah, I'm going to build for that. I'm going to build on something I started talking about a little bit earlier. It's just, you know, some of the great leaders that I've worked with. Um, you know, when, when I first went to work for Andy Flat, the first day or two, um, I sat down in his office and, and we had a conversation and, and he asked me, you know, where do you want to be in five to 10 years? Um, I think I told him that I wanted, I wanted to be his successor. Like I wanted to take his job basically, but he, he rolled with it and he was like, yep. And, uh, you know, he's like, this is kind of what the company needs and, um, and I'll do everything I can to prepare you to do that. If that's kind of your goal. And so, you know, working with folks like that, that give you opportunity to, um, to, to take on new uh, challenges, to, to get experience, um, help you understand where your weaknesses are and, and what you can work on, and also help you understand what your strengths are and what you need to, um, you know, how you need to leverage those. Um, and working with folks who, you know, aren't afraid of failure. It, it's okay to fail. We're going to fail quickly. We're going to learn from this and move forward. So, um, kind of echoing a little bit of what I talked about earlier, you know, um, a lot of my confidence and resiliency just came from working with really good people that, that mentored me and gave me opportunities, um, to take on things, um, sometimes probably before I needed to, <laughs> maybe, uh, or, or, or wasn't ready to, but I was going to get ready in a hurry. So, uh, it's just been a lot of great, uh, mentors and leaders that, that I've been, blessed to work with over my career. That's fantastic. Um, and just a reminder to everyone, feel free to go ahead and start submitting your questions. Um, for Kyle, we'll get to those in just a few minutes. Um, so as we begin to wrap up here, Kyle, what is the best piece of advice you would like to share with this group to help challenge them as leaders um, or help navigate the industry in their careers? Yeah, you know, Nashville is a special place, um, and um, I, I probably took this for granted early on, but um, Nashville particularly, and, and also the healthcare industry within Nashville has always felt really small in that, you know, it, it feels very connected. Um, it's been a very kind of giving ecosystem. Um, I mean, I've reached out to, over my career, you know, very successful leaders who I don't know that I've ever had anybody not give me uh, time or attention. Um, peers have been, uh, you know, super helpful along the way and just a great ecosystem to, to build a network and collaborate with people. 
Um, and so, you know, that, that to me has been really important in kind of the success of the healthcare industry here. And as, as Nashville has really, you know, exploded over the last 10 to 15 years in growth and um, a lot of companies moving here and just a lot of change in the city. Um, I just encourage, you know, the younger folks to, to not let us lose that aspect. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, plug into it and take advantage of it, but also be mindful of uh, maintaining it, which, you know, requires not only plugging in and, and taking advantage and getting help for you and your career, but also giving back to that kind of ecosystem, um, that connected group of, of healthcare leaders here, you know, just, I don't want to see us lose kind of that connected ecosystem that we've had. That's been incredibly um, helpful to me um, early in my career. And it's still to this day, very helpful. Um, and I think it's been, like I said, it's been, you know, vital to the growth and success of healthcare here in Nashville and kind of uh, the healthcare industry um, that, that's grown up here. Yeah, I love that. I think you're speaking straight to the collaborative spirit. And it's one of those things um, that the Nashville Healthcare Council takes a lot of pride in is the network and relationships built um, built through that and that we're able to, to come in and, and, and shine a spotlight on all that happens here in Nashville. All right, Kyle, we have quite a few questions coming in. Nice. First one, here we go. How do you really get to know the leadership team and cultural fit for a new job? Often the limited interview time doesn't really allow you to get the best feel for that. Yeah, I mean, that, that can be challenging. Um, you know, at this stage in my career, it's probably a little easier because um, most opportunities I'm talking to are probably at least some aspect of the team or folks at the company I know. Um, that's probably why it's important to take advantage of the ecosystem here, like I mentioned, um, to gain insight. Um, yeah, it, it can be difficult, um, you know, uh, to, to evaluate, um, but, but do your best to evaluate it. And um, I would also say, you know, once you're, once you're in a role, um, you know, I still focus on those things and I, I can say if, you know, if, if those things don't end, don't end up aligning uh, to my values and, and what's important to me, um, you know, life's too short to, uh, to spend a lot of time getting up to go do something you're not excited and, and happy to go do every day. So. Yeah, I would agree with that. All right. Next question. Are there any notable frustrations you've had during your career, roadblocks you hit, challenges you weren't able to overcome, and what did you learn from them? Oh, that's a great question. I can think of a couple. Um, one, um, and this has changed a little bit, as at least as technology has become more accepted. Um, early in my career, technology felt like it was very segregated from the rest of the business. And, um, you know, if you kind of look at how my career has grown up, not so much as a technologist, but as somebody who had a technology background and um, some comprehension of it, but really more focused on the business side and kind of bridging the gap between the two is, is where a lot of my success has been. Um, I would get very frustrated early in my career um, when, um, you know, folks would just treat me like, like the IT guy, like I couldn't have a, a, you know, a useful thought about the business side of what conversation was going on. I can remember meetings where, you know, you'd be invited to a meeting because there may be a technology question. And then after that was over, they're like, well, we're, you can go, you know, do your technology thing. We're kind of done with that part of it. But I was kind of interested in, be, you know, being part of the business and understanding the business and yeah. Um, so that used to frustrate me a lot, which probably drove me uh, to, you know, some of the additional education I got, getting my MBA and, and studying accounting. That's that's a lot of probably what drove that is is how can I get validation or or you know some way to validate that you know I can be more than just the the IT guy in the corner, but can contribute um, more to the the business. Another thing, you know, I, 
I mentioned this, um, my time at Team Care was, um, it was a phenomenal team that Darren had. Um, really enjoyed working with them. Um, really frustrated by government processes to, to try to live under. You know, we had a phenomenal plan for how to modernize um, the technology for uh, team care and Medicaid, but um, the process which you had to go through to actually make the plan happen was very long and bureaucratic and painful. And I never did figure out how to make that better. So <laughs> that's probably yeah. what we've done. Yeah. All right. What are your what are the biggest changes you've seen working with physician physicians groups and hospitals pre versus post COVID? And then what have you done to adapt in business development and building relationships? Hmm. Pre versus post COVID. Um, I, I mean, post COVID, I would, I will say, I think we got a little bit of a bump. Just there seemed to be um, an acceleration in kind of innovative thinking and willingness to, you know, try and adopt technology. Um, that's maybe been offset a little bit. Uh, by the last year and just the serious financial challenges. So, I mean, I'll just echo, you know, kind of what, how I answered one of the other questions. So we've really gotten laser focused on, um, you know, that message to them that, you know, what we can provide is um, aligned with their pain points they're feeling at the moment. And again, building products that physicians will actually use, um, they don't want more clicks. They don't want more. They don't want to pop out to to uh, new systems. They don't want more alerts. They they don't want all those things. They want things that are going to make um, that time they spend in the EHR more streamlined and provide more value to their decision making. So we've kind of hyper focused on how we continue to make our products more user friendly. Um, that's that's kind of been the focus this year with the, with the financial headwinds that, um, that our customers and potential customers um, are having. Right. Our next question here, what's the best advice or guidance you receive from a mentor or leader, or what has someone told you that you realized later was completely wrong and you're glad you didn't follow the input? Oh, I don't, I don't know about the completely wrong. Um, one of the, one of the best kind of pieces of advice or, or things I picked up um, when I worked with Andy, you know, Andy's kind of thing was always hire people, hire people that are smarter than you and that their talents, um, you know, kind of plug into where your weaknesses are. And, um, and, and I've always tried to kind of build um, air, places where I've had to build teams, uh, I really tried to take that to heart and, and, you know, hire really smart people, get out of their way, let them, let them do their thing. Um, and, and hire people that, you know, I know what I'm not good at, hire people that are really good at that and, and let them be successful. And then the whole team is successful. Another thing too, is really just, um, you know, kind of a focus on being, a part of the, that broader ecosystem that, that I talked about. Um, I had, I've had a couple of leaders along the way that, you know, encouraged me to be involved in things like leadership healthcare and the Nashville technology council and the healthcare council and hymns, you know, be involved. Um, and, and, and also to, to give back, um, to those, um, communities as well. And that just being an important part of, you know, your individual development, but also the, the whole ecosystem. So I've, I've tried to, uh, to take that advice and live it out and, and be involved and give back. Fantastic. Um, and the response to that was, yes, totally pulled that question from Brene Brown's lightning round on her podcast. <laughs> so, there we go. A little Brene Brown for the morning as well, Kyle. All right. All right, so we're actually going to head into my favorite part, which is our rapid fire question section, which um, I pulled from Brene Brown's podcast. We just 
altered our questions to fit leadership healthcare here a little bit. So here we go. Your favorite LHC memory or event? Yeah, that one was easy for me. So uh, after we had spent myself, Kimberly Gessley, and Dave Killian, we spent what seemed like a couple of years, and maybe it was, it's been over 20 years ago, but working with Matt Galvin, you know, pitching this idea of, uh, you know, kind of a, a separate group from just the healthcare council. Um, and finally, we got a little bit of buy-in and the agreement was that we would have a um, initial interest meeting, I think we call that, which is we would we would publicize, we're going to have this interest meeting to discuss this potential new thing. And um, so that the interest meeting, um, the day came, we had a room over on West End at one of the hotels over there. And just tons of people showed up. I don't have any idea how many people, but it was standing room only. I mean, completely validated that this is something we need to do. There's a ton of interest here. Um, I had a small speaking part uh, in the presentation. And as a very young and green um, healthcare person, uh, was nervous and scared to death to do my little speaking part. But I uh, remember that meeting like it was yesterday. And 20 years ago, you're here doing a little speaking part again, <laughs> full circle. Full circle, absolutely. All right, so um, we talked about this earlier, and I'm so excited to hear what you're going to say. Kyle, if you weren't CIO at Evidence Care, what would you be doing? Yeah, my initial thought was um, I'd probably be a football coach. Uh, my freshman year in college, that was my intent. Um, that's kind of what was my first major and what I intended to do. Um, but the more I thought about love teachers. I'm glad we have people who can teach and are great teachers. But the more I thought about me teaching high school, um, the, the less I could actually see myself doing that. So um, somewhere along the way ended up in, you know, in a um, IT program instead of teaching and, and coaching. The other thing, though, uh, today, if 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 I could snap my fingers and switch careers, I'd probably be a fly fishing guide. I mean, okay. that's that, that's that's what most of my brain power goes to and I'm not thinking about work so just thinking about how I can be on the water more so yeah so where do you where do you go fly fishing do you have a favorite spot um I have a cabin in North Georgia so I, we, we love when we can get down there I love to fly fish there um I like to go out west and and fish I don't do it a ton but um anywhere Idaho I love Idaho been to Idaho a couple times okay very good. All right. So what are you binging? Books, podcasts, shows? All right. I'll give you a couple of books. And um, I'm not a huge reader. Um, I, I've gotten better with Audible that I can listen to books. But a, a couple of books I am reading. One, I'll give you a work one or kind of business related one and one not. So business related, there's a book called Traction uh, by Gina Wickman. Um, our executive team read Traction probably a year, year and a half ago. Um, it lays out the EOS, the Entrepreneur Operating System. We've adopted most of that as kind of how we operate. Um, and we read through the book kind of quickly and started implementing that. And it's been phenomenal. But I'm going back and rereading the book when I can really kind of focus on it and finding all kinds of stuff I missed the first time. So it's a really good book. Um, the other book I've just started um, is called Pappy Land. Um, it's a book by Wright Thompson. Uh, Wright uh, mostly does sports related stuff, but um, he wrote this book about the family um, and kind of the history of the folks who own Pappy Van Winkle, the, the, the bourbon brand. And so I've just started that one. It seems pretty interesting so far. Great. Very good. We'll um, be sure to put those in our follow-up communication. So last question here, what are you hopeful about for the next 20 years in healthcare? Yeah, I'm just really excited about kind of the acceleration and adoption of, of technology um, and innovation. Um, I, I think it's, it's at a better place than, you know, as far as the willingness to try things and adopt and um, 
the best place it's been since I've been in healthcare. Um, I just think there's a lot of healthcare problems that we can make a dent in over the next 20 years um, using technology. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes and, um, and, and hopeful that we can, we can make a big impact and, and hopefully I can be part of that. Awesome. Well, you just got a shout out from Matt Gallivan. Thanks for your input, leadership, and getting LHC started. Um, so Thank Kyle, you, it has it has been absolutely wonderful to start our day with you. Um, thank you for spending time with us this morning, for sharing your story. And one of the things that I've come to admire about you through, through getting to know you coming to this event is your value in relationships and the way you nurture those over the course of your career. It's, it's a true reflection of the collaborative spirit that we have here in the Nashville healthcare industry. Um, so thank you for sharing your stories today. Oh, thanks, Molly, for having me. And thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, ho hopefully, I said a few things that might be helpful to you. Yes, absolutely. And thank you to again to our 20th anniversary sponsors, Belmont University, Jack C. Massey Graduate School of Business, HCA Healthcare, Lipscomb University, Pfeffer Graduate School of Business, Oracle Cerner, Surgery Partners, and Team Health. And I look forward to seeing you, seeing all of you, hopefully you as well, Kyle, on December 15th for our holiday and awards reception. Don't forget your ugly holiday sweater. We will be giving awards for those. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.